Ah, an easy one today. Let's just let's just do some backstitch. Chill. Okay, you're gonna start heckling it, you're gonna start a stitch length away from the start of your line. Come up and go down. That's it. <laughs> Tutorial over. No, I'm joking. Okay. So we come up a stitch length away. And make sure you're going through this hole, okay? Going through the same hole. You don't want to split this floss as you go through. You're just comfortably sharing the hole. They're neighbors. I'm a big fan of backstitch. I'm using a full strand of floss, so my back stitch is nice and puffy. <laughs> it almost looks like beads. If you don't like all this texture, if you use fewer strands of floss, you're definitely going to get less puffiness, obviously. Um, but you'll, you'll still see, you'll still be able to see where your stitches are. So if you don't like that look, then this isn't the stitch for you. You can uh, you can do the whipped back stitch. That kind of covers some of the dents. That, I don't know what we call want to call those the little the indentations, the cleavage, whatever word you want to use. But like I said, I like I kind of like it. So you want to kind of plan here because I have a very sharp turn so I'm gonna make what the heck did I just do I did not did I go in the same hole or not I don't think I did don't do that there I go I started like talking and then <laughs> I couldn't stitch anymore I should probably do voiceovers but that sounds like a lot of work because then I have to do every video twice. I like doing videos once in my PJs. <laughs> All right, so I, I planned it so that that last stitch would just end up in there. It would touch the edge. So for here, I don't even know. I think I'm actually gonna share this hole. Yeah, that works. I thought I was going to go all the way back here with it, but I think that would have looked weird. So, do what you got to do to follow your guidelines. But, uh, if you need to do like a sharp corner, you know, make sure that corner is at the edge of a stitch, like where one stitch ends and another begins. That's pretty much all I have to say about backstitch. Use it for vines, use it for lettering, use it for... <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> I actually like to use it to fill. Have we done that one yet? No, we haven't. So I'll show that soon. It's the perfect couch stitch for me. I can just sit on the couch and do back stitch and not have to think and just just relax and stitch. All right, let's fill the shape with back stitch. So there's a couple different ways to fill with back stitch. And with a shape like this, I'm gonna say the easiest is going to be by outlining it first, because that'll help define our shape. And then we'll kind of go back and spiral in with backstitch. So the same thing applies here to regular backstitch. When you have a corner, like I have one coming up, or I want, I don't want a curvy edge, I want a sharp edge. You definitely want that to be a joint. You want that to be where one stitch ends and another stitch begins. Sorry, I ran into my shutters with my hand. 
I am just stitching by a window to get some natural, lovely light from the sunshine here in Arizona. So there's my edge. And same rule applies here as with backstitch. All these stitches are sharing holes. If you do not have them share holes, you will have gaps between your stitches. The other way to fill a shape with backstitch would be to do it in rows or columns. If you do it with rows, you can tell it would look kind of like you're filling your, your shape with bricks. You can line those bricks up or you can stagger them. You can do some interesting things. Same if you do with columns. But for a shape like this where we have these curves and we really care about the final shape, we want it to read as a B, I think doing an outline is useful. If I were to fill this shape using rows, let's say horizontal rows, I would probably come in with a pen and add some guidelines for myself to make sure that my stitches stay parallel, horizontal. It just gets harder because you have to be very precise with your the stitches that hit the edge of your shape to help define your shape. But with this outline method, eh, you don't have to worry so much. Especially after you do that, especially after you do the outline. <laughs> you just kind of go to town. Shutter. Thank you. Someday I'll do something a little bit more high tech than <laughs> my cell phone next to a window. But until then, <laughs> you get my shutters and you get my cats. Actually, we haven't had too many interruptions from the cats lately. So I'll show you kind of how to stagger. So you can either make a really short stitch here or just start by doing a long stitch, which is the easier way, which is how I'm going to do it. And then that way I come up in the center of the parallel, does that make sense? <laughs> the center line of the parallel stitch so that my stitches are staggered to look like bricks. It won't continue, like I won't be able to maintain that just because I'm filling the shape. It'll get all wonky in the middle, but if you've wondered how to do that, you can you just take it. <laughs> so here I do an extra long stitch to get to the corner. I think while I'm over here, I'm going to do my outline of that hole. So you can use this for anything, whatever you want to fill. You can use it for lettering. You can use it to fill a leaf, to fill a flower. This, this stitch was probably too long. I don't know if you can see, I have a, a little gap there. Well, hello, kitty. All right, so while I'm over here, I'm gonna do, okay, why are you on the table though? Um, okay. Honey, you're blocking my light a little bit.
Okay, we just need a moment for her because she's just the cutest. Hi, sweetie. Okay. She's a little camera shy. That's okay. I am too. You will not be reversing the camera on me today. <laughs> Probably could have used more than four stitches on this shape. It's not going to be super well defined. I'm going to blame the cat. So one thing, I don't know if you can see, there's like a little gap here, there's a little gap here, there's a little gap here. I'm going to wait to fill those because as I come in with my other stitches, might not might not be as noticeable and also it's possible that other stitches will kind of press against those stitches if that makes sense stitches i haven't stitched yet <laughs> and the space will get filled in So we are definitely in an awkward phase. This looks uncomfortable and not really like a bee. Definitely should have just made this <laughs> stitch longer <laughs> instead of having to come in with this mini stitch. All right, I'm gonna come fill from this side. Why? Um, because I don't really know what's going on over here anymore, so I'm <laughs> I'm gonna come back to it. But I know we have. We have two thicknesses of backstitch up there and only one thickness down here. So. I'm doing better on this one. I'm making these stitches smaller. So what happens when you rush and try to make the stitches bigger. <laughs> Doesn't look as good. Oops. I have been de-needled. I'm also gonna need more floss. Took a surprising amount. Okay, so one thing you kind of have to figure out here is, you know, to fill, to fill this, do we want to just go up and down or do we want to have the curves on it? I think we just want to go up and down. So, I will just start that so you can see what it's going to look like. And then I can fill in that weird gap that I've created. Okay. 
So here I'll just do two more columns of back stitch. Here I'll probably add one to two more to fill in this. And for this goofy little spot, I'm going to come in, add a stitch here, and it's just a fuzzy stitch. I feel like I need a stitch here though. I'm going to kind of fake it. Again, I, I chose kind of a tricky shape here. So up here, mm, trying to decide if I want to fill in those little gaps. I'm just going to keep going. I'm actually going to have to pause and get more floss is what I really need to do. Okay, I got more floss. So you can see how, you know, I, I had a formula of what I wanted to do. I wanted to outline the shape and then go in. But with any shape, you know, unless you have like a perfect box or a perfect circle, there's going to be some spots that fill in faster than others, right? So you're going to have to do some faking it. And that's okay. Just keep going. Fill the shape. Who are you? There we go. Actually, I don't know why I did this stitch here. I should have should have kept it curving. That's all right. That's all right. cat's still here, just looking out the window. We had quail babies back there last year. They were so cute. I saved that. <laughs> All right, that's my B filled with backstitch.